Until now, we saw direct access to object attributes. For example, here is a class to represent a circle. You can directly access the radius attribute through its objects. You can even set a new value on the radius attribute directly. In many languages, direct access to attributes is discouraged. The convention in those languages is to make attributes private and expose getter and setter methods for those attributes. We could do this in Python. We can prefix the attribute with an underscore. Python interpreter doesn't have any special meaning for such attributes. It's just a convention. The user of our code isn't supposed to modify such attributes directly. If Python had getter and setter methods, we would be using it like this. As you can see, Python's way of directly accessing the attributes is much more convenient than using getter and setter methods. There are some advantages to having setter and getter methods. The setters and getters give control over how an attribute's value is set and returned. For example, assume that we wrote our library code like this. We don't mind if users of our code directly access or modify the radius attribute. Think of yourself as a library author, and your code is on the left side of the line. Users of your code might be doing below things in their code. Assume that at a later point, you want to ensure that the radius cannot be a negative value. You can modify your code to make the radius attribute private and define getter and setter methods for it. You can add your validations in the setter method. The problem with this approach is that now all of the users of your code will have to modify their code since the interface of the class is changed. Users will have to change their code to something like this. It's always better for the end user if the interface provided by the library doesn't change at all. You may think of always starting with the second code itself, even if we don't have any validations to be performed. But then you have to use function calls to access the attribute. It's not as convenient as directly accessing the attributes. Python's solution to this problem is the property class. The approach you should take when writing Python code is to start with a minimal amount of code to get things done. Let's take our original code itself. Now, assume that you reached a point where the original requirements were changed and you were asked to add some validation code to ensure the radius won't be negative. When we do the rewrite, we will write code the same as what we saw when we wrote getter and setter methods. For simplicity, assume that we don't want to have the validation when we create the object. We only want to do the validation when the user assigns a new value to a circle object. We will store the value of radius in an attribute with an underscore prefix in its name. The getter method will return the value stored in this private variable. The setter method will set the new value on this private variable after ensuring the new value is a positive number. If the user tries to set a negative value, it will throw an exception. Then we define a class attribute radius. The value of this class attribute is an object of the property class. We pass our getter and setter methods as arguments to its constructor. Remember, our original attribute name was radius without the underscore. In the new code, we don't have such an attribute in the instance dictionary, but in the class dictionary. And its value is a property object. From the user's perspective, the interface remains the same. They don't have to change their code, assuming they are not setting the radius to a negative value anywhere. If you try to assign a negative value, you will get the value error exception. Note that from an end user's perspective, they are accessing the attribute using the name radius without any underscores. It's not stored in the instance dictionary. The actual value of radius is stored in the private attribute underscore radius, and this private attribute is stored in the instance dictionary. This radius attribute is a property object, and it is stored in the class dictionary. When you try to access the radius attribute through an instance of this circle class, this is how Python does the attribute lookup. It first searches the radius attribute in the instance namespace. Then looks in the class namespace. Python finds radius which is a property object that has to get and set accessors. Python then uses these accessor methods to get or set the attribute value. One interesting thing is that, even if you add an attribute directly into the instance dictionary with a name same as that of the property, Python will still use the accessor methods of the property object. This is the signature of the property class's constructor.
It accepts four optional arguments. fget specifies the function to call to get the instance attribute value. fset specifies the function to call to set a new value on the instance attribute. fdel specifies the function to call when deleting an instance attribute. You may also pass a doc string representing the doc string of the attribute. Until now, we only specified the getter and setter. Let's try setting a deleter and a doc string for a property attribute. The string you specified will be displayed as a help text for the corresponding attribute when you call help on your class. Next, let's see the deleter in action. Python isn't going to delete anything, it simply runs the function when you use the built-in del to delete the attribute. Within the deleter method, we are simply printing a line, and then deleting the private attribute. So the private attribute will be removed from the instance dictionary. Notice that the property object is not deleted. We can still set a new value on the radius attribute even after deleting it, it will still be treated as a property object. We already saw the signature of the property class. All of its parameters have none as the default value, which means they are optional. This allows us to create property objects in multiple ways. The property class defines getter, setter, and deleter methods that can take a callable as an argument. All of these methods return a new property instance with the appropriate method now set. Or you can pass the getter alone when creating the property object and add the setter method later. Notice that the getter and setter methods return a new instance of the property object. This is why we are assigning it back to the same variable x in the previous example. Let's see these getter and setter methods of the property class in action. First, I'm defining a function that will be passed as the fit parameter when creating the property object. I'm not defining the getval method inside a class, so the self parameter doesn't have much meaning here. It's just a dummy function. Next, I'm creating an instance of property and assigning it to p1. If you look in the class dictionary of property class, you will see the fget, fset and fdel class attributes along with getter, setter, and deleter methods. Initially, all of them are none. Next, we set the fget value by calling the getter method on the property object. The fget method returns a new property object with the value set for fget attribute. Next, I'm defining a dummy function to pass as the setter. This function is passed into the setter method of p2. Remember, p2 already has a value on its fget. Just like the getter method, the setter method also returns a new property object with the new value set on its fset attribute. So, now p3 has values assigned on both fget and fset. The p1, p2, and p3 are different objects. p3 was created from p2. So both of their fget attributes point to the same function that we passed. The important pattern to note here is that setting values using the getter, setter and deleter methods returns a new property object with values set on corresponding attributes. This is the code we wrote so far. The last line can be rewritten as three separate lines. Here we specify the setter and deleter by separate method calls. We can rewrite this using decorator syntax. A decorator is just a fancy syntax for a function that accepts another function and returns a new one. I'm also removing the getRadius method and putting the logic directly in the body of the radius method. This rewrite might be a bit confusing for some people. The func in the decorator syntax should be our getRadius method. But assume that the method name was radius instead of getRadius. The last two lines remain the same. Following the same pattern, we can rewrite the last two lines also using the decorator syntax. The decorators will be the radius.setter and radius.getter methods. It's important to use the same name for all methods. This is because each of these decorators is returning a new property object, and we want our final attribute name to be radius itself. This decorator syntax is what you will see in almost all Python code when dealing with property attributes.
If you want to have a doc string, you need to define it inside the getter. Next, we want a way to compute the area of the circle. We will simply define an area method. As expected, when you call the method, you get the area of the circle. If you think about it, area is more like an attribute of the circle, just like radius. We could just define area as a property with only the get accessor. Now, we don't need to call area as a method, we can access it just like radius. Each time you access the area property, the getter method is called, and the value is computed. So, even if you change the radius attribute, the next time you access the area attribute, its value is updated. We only define the getter, so if we try to assign a value to the area attribute, Python will raise an attribute error exception. So, when we define only getter, the attribute becomes a read-only attribute. Notice that the area is computed every time we access the area attribute, even if the radius is not changed. This is inefficient. A common pattern is to cache the value of such computed attributes. We will store the area in a private instance variable. Initially, we set its value as none. A value of none indicates that we should compute the area. If it's not none, simply return that value. This is what we do in the body of the get accessor method of area property. We also want to detect if the radius attribute is changed. If it is changed, we need to recalculate the area with the new radius. So, we make the radius attribute also a property object. Nothing special in its getter, we simply return the value stored in the private variable. However, in the setter method of the radius attribute, after storing the new radius value, we set the private area attribute to none. This is effectively invalidating the cache. So, the next time user accesses the area attribute, it's recalculated.